What's going on guys, Billy here, and yesterday we got a brand new firmware update for the DJI Mavic Air 2. Released on August 10th, 2020, this version number is 01.00.0340 and is 178.3 megabytes in size to download. The following patch notes accompany this firmware update, so if you want to read through all of them really quickly, go ahead and pause the video, as now we're going to begin checking out some of the larger changes. You know, it's not every single week that I get to cover two relatively larger updates pushed out to one single drone but this week, after going radio silent for a little over three months, DJI finally delivered with their first large firmware update for the DJI Mavic Air 2. Now in this video, I want to run down the full list of everything that changed in this firmware update, starting off with how the obstacle avoidance works. We now have this new flight assistance menu that gives us the option to bypass obstacles, break or come to a stop at obstacles, or you can turn obstacle avoidance totally off. Now just to quickly backpedal here, when we're in the bypass flight assistance mode, we now also have the option to disable sideways flight so that all the drone will do is fly forwards and backwards. It's pretty self-explanatory. So after I did some flying with the Mavic Air 2 and I toggled the sideways flight both on and off, I was trying to understand exactly why this was a feature, like why DJI would decide to put this in and it became clear that it's somewhat of a safety feature, right? This drone doesn't have any sideways obstacle avoidance sensors. It's only got forward, backward, and downward sensors. So in this case, if you disable sideways flight, it's always going to pick up the forward and backward obstacle avoidance sensors and you don't run the risk of potentially running into something when flying left and right if you've got a potential blind spot here again with no sensors. Now I almost feel like this is a step in the wrong direction. You're kind of teaching these new drone operators how to only focus on flying forwards and backwards when I think the great part about a drone is being able to go wherever you want. You can fly right, left, forward, and backwards as fast as you could all of the others, right? It's not like you can go slower when going backwards. These drones are very nimble and I like to take full advantage of that. So as soon as you take away the ability to go left and right, I kind of panic. Like I found myself flying towards objects when filming and thinking, okay, I'll veer off to the left and not being able to because I had the sideways flight disabled. So it's kind of a good thing and it's kind of a bad thing, but regardless, you can toggle this on and off right from the main flight screen. So we can cycle between turning sideways flight on and off with the quick tap of the obstacle avoidance icon here on the left. I wish that I could quickly turn the obstacle avoidance off too by long pressing or something, but right now, it just acts as a means to toggle sideways flight both on and off. You know, I also thought that disabling the sideways flight would make for a better FPV-like flying experience. Now, of course, this is not an FPV drone, but DJI likes to try and give you an FPV experience inside of this drone, and I feel like disabling sideways flight could be a good first step, so I went ahead and switched my gimbal mode into FPV, but it flies pretty damn slow without being able to switch into sport mode, which totally defeats the purpose of what I was thinking. Now, while we're here touching on the optimizations to the FPV mode for the gimbal, I'm not someone who uses it all that often, but it still seems pretty rough. The immersion isn't up to par with the real experience as the gimbal sort of clicks back into place when coming level with the horizon, so I think that I'll switch my gimbal back to follow mode like always. Regardless of how long I spend on that new reworked obstacle avoidance system, it's essentially the same thing. There's nothing that's crazy different except for the fact that now this drone can disable sideways flight, which again, might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it could be pretty good for beginners so they don't crash their brand new Mavic Air 2. Now, while that was one of the very first bullet points that was put here on the patch notes, perhaps the biggest new feature added here to the Mavic Air 2 is digital zoom. So now with this drone, we can digitally crop in on the image in the camera and zoom in up to four times when shooting in 1080p. I think that this is the first drone that can digitally zoom in since the original Mavic Pro released back in 2016. Of course, the Mavic 2 zoom can do its optical zoom and its digital zoom, but I think that this is the first Mavic with the title, without the title, zoom in the name that can digitally zoom. So to activate the digital zoom, we'll jump into the resolution menu under the camera settings, which now splits 4K into wide and zoom options. Upon selecting zoom, the 1X option punches in on that wide frame a little bit, and then tapping 2X punches in twice as far. Under 2.7K, we get the same option to zoom in up to two times, but where we see the most zoom is when jumping into 1080p, where we can punch in two times, three times, and even four times. While this feature really is great to have built directly into a drone, when we push it too far using 1080p and zooming all the way in four times, 
the image just totally falls apart. Like if we look at this image taken straight off of the SD card, this is something that I wouldn't use for shooting cinematic video under any circumstances. I can see this being helpful for search and rescue missions and inspections though, because getting a closer look in these fields is definitely helpful. Now what I do find myself using though is the 4K zoom function because I find that the image is still perfectly sharp. For example, using the 4K wide shooting mode is great for showing off the full boat here, but if I want to get closer, I can switch over to the 4K zoom shooting mode and even at 1x, I can get up closer to the boat. Punching in further to two times gets me even closer and shows off a lot of the detail in the hole and on the deck and the image surprisingly stays intact. After all, this is a 1080p video. So a little bit earlier when I was flying around the Mavic Air 2 on this brand new firmware version, I was using the digital zoom like crazy to understand exactly how far I could push it and ultimately exactly how it works because all of these different manufacturers implement digital zoom into their drones in a different way. Some of them work really well. Some of them don't work all that well, but in the Mavic Air 2, it is a really solid feature. So as I sat down and I tried kind of messing around with things, I was wondering, okay, I shoot 4k wide video. That's the full readout of the sensor. I get 38 40 by 2160 video that works great when I zoom in using the 4k zoom option one times now that gives us 2.7k right despite it showing 3840 by 2160 in the metadata we've now zoomed into more or less 2.7k now when we zoom into two times that then gives us 1080p video a 1080p readout despite again the metadata showing a 4k video because we're digitally zooming in on that 4k image now again I was wondering exactly how they did this because the image looks really good. It looks fairly sharp for being technically a 1080p video. So I reached out to DJI and they reminded me that this drone has a 48 megapixel sensor. So when it shoots 48 megapixel photos, you've got 8,000 by 6,000 pixels, 48 megapixels. So they use that sensor and crop down to give you a digitally zoomed image I think I'm still a little bit confused on exactly how it works, but hey, they've got the real estate to use on that 48 megapixel sensor so they can make it work through digital zoom. Now here's a mistake I think people are going to make. They're gonna look at this and think that it now totally kicks the Mavic 2 zoom over to the side. They think it's gonna be totally obsolete, but I can say that you shouldn't doubt that optical zoom. It really does make a huge difference because the image looks a lot more clear than just resulting immediately to digital zoom and trying to crop in two times on a 4K video to drop it down to 1080p. Now, I know that in previous videos, I've discounted the Mavic 2 zoom. I've said that the Mavic Air 2 is the better buy and I still stand by that but if you're somebody that needs the zoom function the Mavic 2 zoom is by far the best drone to go with right now because it offers that optical zoom so I have to say that as of right now I've still got some questions on exactly how the digital zoom feature works how does it take advantage of that 48 megapixel sensor does it shoot 8k video and then crop in on that it's a question that I have and it's a question that we can definitely get answered in the future but for this first look at the firmware update I hope I gave you guys some sufficient information now we've got four more things listed here on the patch notes. They're relatively smaller, although there is one thing that makes me very happy. It says here, optimize shooting performance when flying forward in sport mode. Using sport mode on these drones is something that I use on the daily. I basically never switch my remote out of sport mode because I love to be able to fly as fast as possible and I love getting that fast paced footage. One bad thing about the Mavic design is because of the little lip here on the top, it kind of gets in the way of the gimbal fully looking forward when you're pitching forward flying in sport mode, but reluctantly with the Mavic Air 2, I really haven't had all that much issues in sport mode. I haven't had the gimbal twitching down or anything like that. And especially after this update, flying around, the gimbal didn't twitch once. So I've got to say huge hats, off, huge hats off to DJI because with that feature, I can now confidently shoot in sport mode all the time with the Mavic Air 2 and I never have to worry about the gimbal shooting down and ruining my shot. Now there's three more things here listed. You guys obviously saw the patch notes in the beginning. We've got some changes here to hyperlapse. So now we've got 4K for hyperlapses. Um, and also we can now have the task library for hyperlapses. That's a big change. So now we can save our hyperlapses and it's an overall better experience. Um, and finally, it now optimizes active track when shooting or tracking vehicles at a low altitude. So it seems like DJI is really trying to bulk up their active track game here, not only with the Mavic Air 2, but across 
their entire lineup of drones. And I can see why, because Skydio 2 is just absolutely killing it with the Skydio 2 and their tracking features. Uh, but yeah, guys, this is a very solid update, a very good set of features and changes made here to the Mavic Air 2. I can't help but want more because this drone is so good, and I think that it has potential to be even better, as I've said in my previous videos. But it's going to be something that I think is a work in progress, and it's something I think we'll see evolve a little bit more over the next coming months. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.